So welcome to the Ham and Egg pregame show week three. Uh, my name is Drew Forbes. Uh, Derek Daniels. Marcus Anthony. So we had a, a kind of an interesting week. Nobody did overly well, but Derek clearly came out the victory. Uh, I ended up finishing three and three uh, last week. Derek went four and two, so he did win out the week. And uh, Marcus also three and three. So we've got a pretty close battle here. Uh, the way this is going to work is that we're going to consistently, obviously, track our records throughout the season. Uh, so you can see who to trust and who to not. Um, so let's just go right into it. Uh, first game, got Denver on the road against Green Bay. And Green Bay is a seven-point favorite. Uh, Derek, who are you taking and why? So this one I struggled with. Um, I don't necessarily believe in Denver. Uh, but Green Bay, outside of, of one half of football this entire season, uh, hasn't looked that impressive either. And I don't know how much of that was just poor game planning and execution from, from a Minnesota standpoint, right. or how much was actually Green Bay's good. Right. Um, Aaron Rodgers, they're not on sync on offense for sure. And I, I could see this being a really close game, one-score game. So I'm actually going to take Denver uh, with the points for, for this one. Now, I hate Joe Flacco more than anyone else. <laughs> uh, I actually hate old any AFC North quarterbacks, but I'm, I'm actually in the same boat. I'm not super convinced on Green Bay. Um, I think Denver's defense is going to come to play, and I, I think it's going to be a, a close game. Green Bay probably pulls it out at home, but I think Denver covers the spread, plus seven. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, so we're all agreeing. Um, I, I don't, I'm, again, I've, I've said it a million times, and maybe I'll look like an idiot by the end of the season, but I don't believe in Green Bay that much. Obviously, I do think that they ended up winning this game, but um, I yeah, I, I, I don't think it's going to be that impressive of a win. So um, I think Denver ends up ends up covering for sure. I think we've seen from, from Aaron Rodgers, too, elite pass rushers make him nervous now. Right. Uh, obviously, collarbone issues, different injuries. Uh, Von Miller is not going to make that any easier on him. Absolutely so, not. Uh, definitely, uh, he seems to be fading away a little bit. I like Green Bay to win, but like we all said, I mean, the points uh, kind of hard not to take. Sure. Well, let's move on to the next game. This is the greatest game of the week, maybe the year. Uh, Giants, uh, six-point dogs on the road against the Bucks. What's your take? Um, for me, this is actually one of my personal favorite bets of the week. Giants plus the points all day long. Um, and a couple of my parlays and bets, I've actually bought them up just for a little fun. Um, but I think Daniel Jones is going to come perform. Uh, the offense is going to be dulled down maybe a little bit, but I think they play. I think they... A rally around Daniel Jones, and I think Tampa might be a little overhyped after that impressive victory against Carolina, but for me, it's Giants cover all day long. Uh, so this one, uh, I think, I mean, Saquon's been amazing this year. I think we kind of see that almost close to the ceiling of what Saquon can, Saquon can do by himself, because mm-hmm. nobody respects their passing game. Right, um, true. Even if Daniel Jones is great, they're still not fielding a NFL wide receiving core. Right. There's no way around that. Uh, so I'm actually, I think the Bucks build off of this. Uh, from a statement standpoint, we talk about this being a really pivotal year for Jameis. If it's not now, then when? Um, so I actually, I think the Bucks win it by a touchdown at least there. I, uh, I hate to agree with you again, but I do. Um, here, here's the X factor in this game for me. Uh, first of all, it's, it's the, uh, the third game now Jameis Winston has under Bruce Arians' offense. I do think that it's, gonna, it, it's always going to be rusty getting into a new offense. Uh, I have every bit of faith in Jameis' skills. I don't think he's the player that I ultimately thought he would be. Uh, but here's the thing about the Bucks is I think their defense is good, weirdly good. Um, maybe they just looked really good last week because they were playing the Panthers, uh, but they looked really bad in, in the first week because Jameis Winston threw two pick sixes. So I think that you know that if, if you look at them on paper, they look worse than they are. I liked what I saw of the Bucks defense. I am taking uh, the Bucks to cover that spread. Uh, so let's go to the next game. Uh, probably the game of the week. It's definitely the game of the week. Uh, the actual game of the week, not the, <laughs> yeah, the real one. Um, but Baltimore five and a half point dogs in Arrowhead. Marcus, what's your take? So. This, for me, this is one of the biggest, let's, let's prove it, let's, let's yeah. show what you're all about, because there, there's a lot of doubts. Baltimore thumped Miami, and, you know, they squeaked one out against Arizona, um, but I think, personally, Kansas City is going to put it on Baltimore. I, I think, uh, my favorite statistic I heard was Baltimore has the number one rush defense um, thus far in the year, Right. Um, but f- fortunately for that stat and my betting uh, statistics there... Baltimore was up 35 points early on in the game, so Miami wasn't running. And we know that Arizona has, I think they have, they might have like 16, 18 total rushes thus far this year. Yeah. So I think that stat that you to 
bet on or like really include. I think it's a little skewed. Uh, I, th- I think Kansas City really puts it on Baltimore. I'll take Kansas City. Okay. Derek? Yeah, so I definitely, I mean, I love Kansas City to win. And this is one of those situations where like my, my, my head tells me that uh, – Lamar Jackson's a little overrated. That it's a, it's a product of who they played. To your point with that, that rushing stat, nobody's running. Nobody's really running the ball against them, so it's easy to be a, like, a rushing defense when nobody's actually. <laughs> if they running ran against you sure. four times. You give you know, exactly. the money of yours. Is what right. Now I will say, KC doesn't really show that they want to run the ball either. Uh, they're they're definitely past you know first, second, and third. Um, but this is one of those games where I almost feel like Baltimore in garbage time might cut it to less than a touchdown late. Uh, I don't think Kansas City's defense is closing the door on anybody yet. Um, so even though I like Casey to win, I think I'm going to take Baltimore with the points. Yeah, I think Vegas has a little bit of Mahomes fever, as you should. Um, if you don't have Mahomes <laughs> fever, do. then yeah, you're, if you don't have Mahomes fever, then you're not paying attention. Yeah. Uh, currently, Patrick Mahomes, if he keeps up the pace that he's on right now, he's on pace for 6,500 passing yards and 57 touchdowns or 56 touchdowns. So obviously breaks multiple records there. Probably won't happen, but it very much could with Patrick Mahomes. Um, they don't need a running game in Kansas City. I love Patrick Mahomes. I love Kansas City. Uh, they're dominant at Arrowhead. However, the difference in this game for me is that I have a lot of trust in John Harbaugh. I think that Baltimore's defense is actually really solid. Yeah. Um, and I think that they end up scrapping out a win, whether in garbage time or, or what have you. I, I do think that Baltimore covers that spread. Yeah. Maybe maybe lose by a field goal. That's what that, that's what I'll call in that game. It was a nail biter last year. Yep, you know. I, Kansas City Kansas City's going to win the game one hundred percent. I mean, you, I don't think you can beat Kansas City in Arrowhead, quite frankly, but um, I definitely think basically got the win. All right, so let's go in uh, Car- Carolina Arizona. Kind of a really interesting game from from a from a betting perspective. Arizona is favored by two. Marcus, what's your take? Snow. It's no secret. I'm, <laughs> I've, been, I've been riding the Arizona bandwagon uh, for quite some time. Um, and they are 2-0 against the spread. Now, before Cam Newton was uh, ruled out, Arizona was plus three, and I did jump all over that, bought them three and a half. I think that's right. a gimme. But now, Arizona is minus two. Um, I prefer the over, and if Will Greer was in, maybe it's a different story, but, hey, Arizona's due, baby. Give me Arizona, minus two at home. Let's get a win on the board. Yeah, so this is one where, if you look at it, just from an overall football stance, I almost think Cam Newton not playing helps Carolina. Right. Um, he's you can tell he's hurt. Uh, he's they, you know the ankle's the Definitely. biggest issue, but even his shoulder doesn't look great. No. The ball doesn't. It's not coming out. You know with much velocity. Um, this might be a situation where simplifying the playbook and putting somebody who's healthy in, even though you know Kyle Allen's 100% isn't Cam Newton's 100% obviously. I mean that does that goes without saying, but they might be better off with a backup guy at 100%. Um, that being said. I just I haven't seen a full game out of them yet. Um, I, their, their Thursday night game looked like who wanted to lose the game less. Right. Um, I think I'm gonna take Arizona. I think the air raid's starting to click a little bit. Uh, Kyler's getting the ball out on time. They didn't run the option last week, which is right. a good improvement. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I am gonna. <laughs> it means I am they're gonna, an NFL team now. Right. Yeah. They're, they're at least committed to being an NFL team. Right. Um, I'm take I'm gonna take Arizona on that one. Yeah, uh, again, I always hate to agree with Derek, but uh, I agree with a lot of his points there. Um, Arizona, uh, they, I, the Ky- I was kind of impressed with Kyle Murray last week, I'm not going to lie. I, I hate to say it, but I was. Um, I'm still not still not sold on the offensive scheme, uh, but I do think that they're scrappy. I think Carolina is in a really bad place. I do think Carolina improves, by the way, without Cam Newton. Uh, I, I still have somewhat of faith in that roster, yeah. uh, but they have so many question marks that – Arizona at home, I'm taking them to cover, minus two. Um, Rams, uh, let's, let's go to another really interesting game, probably the, probably the second most interesting game of the week, um, just because I don't think we've seen the full potential of one of these teams. Uh, we already know what we get out of the other one. Uh, the Rams are favored three and a half in Cleveland. Marcus, who you got? Rams are a very, very interesting team. Last week, yeah, I know Breeze got knocked out, but... They played some really good defense, yep. and and thus far their offense hasn't been quite as powerful as as it was last year. But that defense was pretty good last year, and it is like it's shockingly improved with not like many additions. Um, Cleveland got smoked by Tennessee, and we are watching what the Titans have been doing. Yeah, right. Um, and yeah, yeah, Cleveland covered the spread, but uh, I, I I think just about anyone in the NFL. Ha- a quarter of the college teams might have covered that spread on Monday night. Unfortunately for the Jets, it just wasn't fair. I loved, loved the Rams at three. And 
NFL football is a game of inches, and even with the half point, um, the Rams cover. Rams, I think the Rams not only play really good defense, I think the Rams play, finally tune up that offense. I, th- I think it's going to be a blowout from the start to finish. Yeah. Um, I, I Again, I'm. And you're going to hear this probably all season, unless something dramatic changes. I love Cleveland's roster. Mm-hmm. I love their talent. I do not like Freddie Kitchens <laughs> at all. Yeah. Um, I, I think you take, you know, just copy and paste a different coach in there. They dramatically improve. I just, they don't seem to have a clear idea of what they want to do on offense. And right. that's not something that leads to success when Aaron Donald's across the ball. For sure. Um, so I, I like LA by a lot. I, I, um, even on offense, I think they're deeper at wide receiver than Cleveland is at corner. I think Cooper Cup's going to have a huge game, pretty much run free in the middle of, in the middle of the field. Um, so I like them by. I, I, this is one of those things where you know you talk about points betting last week. I might buy this one up a couple of points. I, I like them by a whole touchdown at least. I I, I agree again. <laughs> um, I think I think I think the Rams are going to roll. Uh, on on paper, very equivalent rosters. I mean, they're they're both really well rounded teams. Uh, probably the two best wide receiving cores in the league going at, going at it. Uh, extremely talented defenses. Uh, young talent on both sides of the ball. Um, the difference for me in this game, just like you said, is coaching. Uh, we have a genius on one side of the ball. We have a guy that's going to be fired by week eight on the other. Yeah. I think that they, I think that they get absolutely rolled. Yeah. Like it, I, I, I might even like, the, I might even like this bet if it's like four and a half. I'd, I'd be a little bit, uh, you know, I'd be a little bit more uncertain if it got above five. But I think that they're absolutely going to roll them. So I'm very confident Rams cover that three and a half. Yeah. So um, last game we got on tap. Uh, we've been agreeing a lot, but we do have some, uh, you know, contradicting ones. So that, that's kind of good. Hopefully we contradict on this one. I think we will. Uh, Bears favored by four against Washington on the road. Marcus. Um, Washington, I, I, I think they might try and put up a fight. But Chicago, and Mitch Trubisky has been struggling terribly. And he's your favorite quarterback. We he's a bad that. quarterback. <laughs> so, um oh. I think that Chicago's defense takes advantage of Washington's offensive line, and as serviceable as Case Keenum is, um, I think that Chicago defense is going to put them in such a good position that not only will Chicago, you know, be um, mightily ahead come halftime, early, mid third. I think I think this is going to be the game, and not to any fault of Case Keenum. Right. I think this is when Dwayne Haskins gonna he's gonna get a, a little bit of action. Just you know, Do you think Dwayne Haskins comes in? I, I I think he I think he's gonna show up in the game. I I, ju- I just think that the Chicago defense is just gonna swarm. And I think at a, at some point, like I said, to no benefit credit to uh, Trubisky. Yeah. I, I I think that they're just gonna be all right. You know what? It's time because they they, they struck even though they covered against Dallas. They, 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 they struggled. They couldn't really move it. They didn't do too much. You know, they, they had uh, their spurts. They had moments. But I but Chicago's defense is un, – they're unreal. They are, they, they are fantastic. They're a really good defense. And I think that this is when Dwayne Haskins – Dwayne Haskins is going to get uh, – some action today. It's gonna be it's gonna be a first live NFL action Interesting. for sure. So you like uh, Chicago? Chicago covers. You're taking four. Chicago. Taking Chicago minus four. Derek. Yeah, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take Chicago too here. Um, I think this is a situation. I'm not sure Washington scores a touchdown. I, I think again, kind of a disconjointed offense. They've had spurts where they look really good. Uh, Case Keenum is you know I use it a lot. Definitely a professional quarterback. He's not gonna yeah. win the game for you. He's not probably not gonna lose too many games for you either. Uh, he's replacement level. He's there, um, but this could be a situation where I think Chicago might score more touchdowns than Washington uh, on defense. Right. Where uh, I, I would I, be, I would would not be surprised if Trubisky gets the favor of starting in field goal position a couple times, and uh, just hopefully doesn't take a sack and, and get out of range. Sure. Um, I, again, I'm not a big Trubisky guy. This is almost the opposite of of Cleveland for me. Where I believe in the coaching staff and everything else in the offense, I just don't believe in the quarterback position. Right. I think you know you, you put in one of these these kind of up and coming college uh, prospects, they might be ready to hit that next level. Um, but defensively, right now, Cleo Mack is a game changer, and I don't think Washington has an answer. Um. So yeah, I this is my most uncomfortable bet of the week, but I'm glad that I'm going against you guys. Uh, I'm actually going to bet on Washington, and here's why. Um, if you want to read about my hatred for Mitch Trubisky, uh, <laughs> feel free to go on to the sportsmemory.com. 
Uh, I think he's a terrible quarterback. I really do. Like, yeah, I, I think that in, in two years, he's a backup level quarterback. Uh, similar to the other guy on the other front side of the field, Case Keenum. I think they're actually kind of similar quarterbacks in a lot of ways. Uh, somewhat mobile, uh, terrible thrown downfield, uh, check down guys that when you put a lot of pressure on them, uh, they squirm. Um, and I don't think Washington's going to put a lot of pressure on him. I just think that Mitch Trubisky is a bad quarterback. And he's, he's shown it through two weeks. Um, and I think I think he, he continues on. I like Washington because uh, they're at home. I don't like Washington, by the way. I don't, I don't like that. <laughs> um, but I think that they somehow squeak out and uh, I probably still lose. I'm, I'm, pr- I'm pretty much certain that they still lose. But I think it's going to be a lot closer than people think. Um, I'm curious to see, you know, there's a lot of guys that have experience playing the Bears. you got Adrian Peterson, you got Case Keenum. Uh, these are guys that have played the Bears in the past. Uh, and I'm, I'm just curious about the game, and I don't have any faith in Mitch Trubisky. I think that the Bears' defense rolls. And like you said, I can actually believe Washington covering the spread and not covering a touchdown. Like, this is just going to be a field goal game. It's yeah. going to be an unwatchable game, I think. Yeah. Like, what, like you have a, a terrible offense going against a really good defense – and then a, a terrible quarterback going against a really, 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 really. I mean, what 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 do you think of the Washington defense? Is it is it good? Is it bad? Is it mediocre? I mean, I I don't even know really where to put it. I think they have they're it's kind of disconjointed where they have talent, but they don't have any one level of the right. defense that is above that is above I would say league average. Yeah, they have spots where they're good, but as a unit, uh, probably bottom you know bottom third for sure. sure. They're gonna need some time to mesh for sure. I think average is good enough to beat Mitch Trubisky. That's that, that. That's all I'm saying. All right, so we got we got those are our picks. Um, take them or leave them. Uh, our only our only winning guy so far is Derek. So you probably want to take his <laughs> over ours. But uh, we'll see how it goes uh, into week three. We're super excited about the week. Um, if you guys like our podcast, uh, please subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, and uh, you know, if you like our memes, if you if you enjoy our site, uh, please promote it, share it with your friends. And we appreciate you guys watching us. Thank you very much. Thanks Enjoy guys. week three. Cheers, guys. Oh. Hey, <laughs> cheers, guys. Cheers. Have a good week. <laughs>